I'm Jane. And I'm Phil. And, and we're, we're going to give you a ticket to ride. Choo-choo to Africa. <laughs> Table for two, table for two, having fun, playing games, just me and you. Hi, welcome to our show. Table for Two is a show where we review games based on a two-player perspective. Two people only. Yes, even Nobody if they else play. Allowed. Well, even if the games play for more, we focus on how it plays for both of us. Mm -hmm. Today we're conductors, by the way. Yes. In case you didn't figure that out. You couldn't figure out the hat. Train game. Uh, so, we review games based on five criteria. Five. First of the criteria is, is the game easy to learn? Mm -hmm. Second is the manufacturing. Third is, is the game entertaining? Is did it we, fun to play? Did we enjoy it? Yeah. Did we enjoy it? Uh, fourth, uh, how was the length of the game play? Mm -hmm. And fifth, would we play this game again? Right. So, five criteria and we base it on a scale of one to five. One to five. Mm -hmm. One being, eh. Not, not good. <laughs> okay, maybe that's pretty bad. And uh, <laughs> five being fantastic. At the end, we total all those uh, individual scores up and gives you a possible score of 25. Because if you have 25, you're rocking. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, today's game. Today's game. Is Ta -da -da. Ticket to Ride, The Heart of Africa. Africa. I don't know why I have to say it that way, but I do. Africa. Now, this is an expansion meaning you do need one of the basic sets of Ticket to Ride in order to play. Mm -hmm. So we had one of those basic we sets. We did. Yes, we did. We have the basic Ticket to Ride mm -hmm. game. This game is by Days of Wonder, mm -hmm. uh, great, great game company. Uh, plays two to five players, so you could have some friends over. You could actually invite people over to play this game. Or you could just play two. But you definitely, just a reminder again, this is the game we're reviewing, the Africa version. Yes. But you have yes. to have a base set to, in order to play this one. So right. that's important to know. And then, just like last week and the week, or not last week, but the last two episodes, we actually also had a drink of choice. A drink of choice? Not wine for a change. Not wine. Two times we had wine, but... This was a uh, brewed in Russia, Baltica, grade 9, extra lager. We will talk more about that later in the show. A little bit later about the beer. <laughs> okay, so Jane, uh, tell us how we play the game Ticket to Ride. Okay, let's explain a little bit about this game. Um, so let's take a first look at the board. The board is Africa, uh, but it's part of Africa. It's not the entire continent, part of Africa. Uh, and you'll see on the board there are different towns within Africa. And that was probably the, one of the, fun, the most fun parts of the game was trying to pronounce the towns. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, how do you say this? I know how to say Zamba. Port Elizabeth. That's well, easy. That's easy. Yeah. Port, I knew Zamba because it reminded me of Zumba, which I probably should start doing. But that's another story. N N oh, please. Don't even bother. Okay, well. But anyway, so a <laughs> bunch of cities in Africa. Let's just say that. And then to connect to each city, you have a railway or you know a route to get to each city. And the goal here is, um, well, first let me explain one thing. There's, there's, a, there's a scoring marker on the end as well. You'll see across the whole board, or the whole edge of the board, is a scoring uh, mechanism. Here's our little score tokens. Um, that's really the whole board. But the, the goal of the game, and this is going to sound funny because the last two games was the same goal, to be fair, but we like these kind of games, um, is to have the most points. Whoever gets the most points at the end of the game wins. Simple as that. But how do you get that goal? And we'll explain that here just in a minute. Now to set up the game is very simple. It's a very quick board layout. Um, each player gets 45 to train tokens. Uh, they're plastic. They're really easy to... I had blue. You had blue. I had red. Oops. And I, had, I just had a train accident. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, no. Oh, no. no don't say that. That won't uh, count against you. <laughs> um, everybody gets 45 train tokens. You also start off with four train cards. And you'll see that the cards are different colors. So pink, blue, or I think it's purple. Some people say it's purple, but pink, blue, white. And they correspond to the different routes. So if I was trying to build this green route, I would have to have at least three green train cards. There's also another type of card. It's called a locomotive card, and it's a wild card. So you can actually use this in place of any color on the board. If you're trying to build your train route, you can use that in place of something else you might need. So you start with that. You also start with... Um, every person's dealt four tickets, four ticket to ride, um, and on the back of each ticket is a route or destination, I should say. And what you're trying to do is determine how to get to that destination. So this one actually says, and here's here's where I get the, the, the cities I again. Don't know any better than you. Pagoda, 
to Kambinda. Now, everybody who's from Africa, please don't hit me for this. Vagoda and Kambinda. So what you would do is find those two cities on the map, and what you're trying to do is connect to them via train route. Mm -hmm. If you actually do that entire destination, so if, you, if I make red trains all the way down this path, I would get 13 additional points. So again, keeping in mind, the, game, the goal of the game is to get points, and there it is. I get 13 points if I actually complete this destination. Now, at the beginning of the game, you do get four of these cards, but you only have to keep two of them. The reason why is, is you're, it's almost impossible to be able to complete every route that you're receiving, every destination card. That would be almost impossible. First of all, you don't have enough trains. You want to determine what, what des destinations you think you can accomplish. So you can go ahead and take the two you want, or you can keep all four if you find you can do that or you think you can do it, um, but you only have to keep two. So you get the destination card. Um, the other thing you get is you get one terrain card, and what's kind of nice about this is the terrain card is actually a specific card that's only for the Africa game. And you'll see that there's a pink, blue, and green route um, indicators on this one. If you collect these cards, this enables you to double your points when scoring a route. Okay, so that's what that does. It's actually a, just a quick mechanism to double your point count. And, and I'll explain that how that works out in just a bit. But you do start off with one of these cards as well. Now, to play, very simple. You take turns. That's everybody's used to taking turns. In most games you do that. Um, but on each turn, you can do one of three things. Okay, very simple. You can pick cards, and you'll see here on the on the right of your board there of your screen, there's a, a basically a draw pile for the train cards, and there's always five train cards, you know, kind of uh, up and ready to go and ready to take. We also have the draw pile that you can't see. Just basically, this is what you use to replace that uh, five cards with. We also have two terrain cards, and then again, the same thing over there is a draw pile for the terrain cards. Last but not least, you have destination cards. These are the tickets, that you can also get more of those if you need to in the future as well. So let's just talk. So my first turn, I might decide I'm trying to build this four-car uh, blue route. Now, looking at the choices here, there's no blue to choose from. But I could pick up the wild card if I wanted to. Um, or if I'm trying to do the pink route, I might grab this pink card, just depending on what route you're trying to complete. When you pick a card, though, it's going to be really important to replace it immediately because the card that you're replacing with may be the card you need. So you don't have to just pick from the existing original five cards. You can actually pick from the ones that you're replacing with um, as well. So on your turn, you can actually take two train cards, if that's what you choose to do, to build your hand to actually be able to build your routes. Or you can take terrain cards. And you'll see here there's a black, white, and uh, gray one, and there's a uh, orange, red, and yellow one. So if I know I'm going to try to build a black route, I might take that terrain card because if I have this terrain card in my hand and I actually complete this route, instead of getting the normal points, I would get double the points. So that's, that's what's really kind of nice about those cards. So now you can do one of uh, two things. You can take two of these, you can take two of these, or you can actually take one of each, uh, depending on what you're looking to, to build in, in your deck. The only difference is if you take the locomotive. The locomotive, again, is the wild card. If you choose to take the wild card, that is all you can do. You cannot take two cards. You must take just the one. Uh, that's the only time that's really a, a problem is just when you only take one with a locomotive. The other thing is if you don't like any of the cards showing up, you can also take from the top of the draw pile. And then that's whatever you get. It's a risk right. at that point. You know, you just whatever you get, you get. But it might be better than what's sitting out here. It may be something you need. Um, so number one, you can definitely take the cards you might need per your turn. Now, on your turn, maybe the next turn, you might say, now I have in my hand, you know, four blue train cards. Mm -hmm. And if this is what I want to build, this route right here, I would say, okay, on my turn, I'm going to build a route. Okay, so that's something else you can do on your turn. Again, keep in mind, only one type of thing per turn. But on this turn, I might decide to build this route. I would turn in my four train cards and go ahead and place my little red trains. Choo -choo. I don't know why I do the sound effects, but I do. Um, <laughs> He gets sick of the sound effects. Mm, I don't have a horror yeah. thing over here. Did you? I do. <laughs> Another successful train ride. Yes. Um, and I would claim that route. Now, again, as we mentioned a little earlier, when you claim a route, it's so important to collect your points. Yes. So for a four train uh, car route, that would be seven points. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's actually it's, on the board. It is seven points. Seven points. So I go ahead and move my little token seven, seven times. Now, if I was lucky enough to have two of these terrain cards in my hand, because you do need two of these for a four route, and there's a little rule on that, it's pretty simple. 
if it's you know three or more, I think it is. Uh, three or less. Three, you only three or need less, you only card. need one of these cards, and, and more than that, you need two of these cards. Right. And if I actually had two terrain cards with the blue on it, I could actually claim fourteen points. So that's a you know a good reason to collect these terrain cards. But that's why it's important to score that as you go. Score as you go. It's really important to score as you go. So that's a, the second thing I could do. Now, if you actually make your destination on the destination card, if I actually connect the two routes, or the two cities, I should say, you don't tell anybody that. You keep that a secret. You know you've completed it, but nobody else knows you've completed it. Right. But if you have two of these in your hand, or even one of these in your hand, and you've completed both of them, another thing, or you're close to completing both of them, another thing you can also do is take, on your turn, take four new tickets. And if you take the four new tickets, you take a look at them, see if there's any routes you can, can do, or if they're shorter, or maybe they combine with something else you've done, you can then keep, um, at least, you have to keep at least one of these. You don't have to keep all four, just kind of go through them and say, okay, maybe I think I can do this one too. So now I have another route that I want to try to complete. Right? So it's pretty easy. On each, at each turn, one of three things. Pick a train or a terrain card or a combination, get a new destination if you feel like you can complete another destination, or build a route. So three, three simple things. Scoring, obviously, as you build your route, we mentioned, you go ahead and score as you go. Um, and at the end of the game, you will score some more, and I'll explain that here in a minute. But it's so far pretty easy to, to get through, it's taking turns doing That's that. That's basically it. Yeah. Now, how does the game end? Well, as you're building these routes, obviously, you're depleting your 45 trains. Eventually, you'll have two or less. So if I just completed that route and I only had two trains left, only two left, then I would say, oh, I only have two left, and the game end trigger has happened. At that point, Philip would take his turn, I would take one more turn on my part, and then the game is over. Right. Then the game is done. Um, once you are you know, done with the game, the next step, obviously everybody's scoring as they go along, but the next step is then to go through and see which of those destinations were complete. If I've completed this destination, in this case, I would get an additional seven points. If I completed this destination, I would get an additional 13 points. So we basically are moving the marker for each destination that you have completed. Now here's the bad news. If you've completed this route and you get the seven points, but you didn't complete this route. Wah, wah. Thirteen. <laughs> thirteen wow. down. You actually lose thirteen points. So you, that's why I said earlier, make sure when you take your destination cards, it's doable. You don't want to try to go too crazy trying to do you know a whole bunch of huge ones because number one, you don't have enough trains. Mm -hmm. uh, but number two, you could you know, definitely not complete it, and then you wind up losing really big points. So yeah, so it might look like you're ahead, but then all of a sudden at the end, it all changes. Well, actually, that's what happened in our last game, and I'll, I'll talk about that later. We won't, we won't talk about that. <laughs> now, the, la the last thing I will mention when you're scoring is whoever has the most destinations completed gets this card. Ah. Ten extra points. It's called the African Globetrotter card. Mm -hmm. And what this is is basically showing everybody that you did the best job. <laughs> you got the most destinations. Uh, that adds another 10 points onto your score, which is nice. You know, because it's funny, even if I've completed five destinations and Phil only completed um, two, he could still win because he may have completed two bigger destinations. That's true. For bigger points. So right. that's why this is a nice little card to add on to the, uh, you know, little bonus points mm -hmm. going on. So that's pretty much how you play. Um, Want to talk a little bit about reviewing the game now? Sure. Um, well, uh, first category we have is, is this game easy to learn? So what do you think, Phil? Was it easy to learn? Uh, yeah, it really was easy to learn. You know, the rules, the basic rules. You have to start with the basic rules. That's what's yes. most important. That, that is a good game. point. You have yeah. to start with the basic rules. So the basic rules, three pages. Three so lousy pages. Not basically, that at what all. Jane said is exactly what the and rules are. Diagrams. 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 There are diagrams in there. Now the second. Uh, this scared me. My first. This question. kind of scared me. Uh, lots of pages here, and, and then I, I like, realized, oh, no. but we don't have to learn all the different languages. There's only <laughs> so, one page per language. So there's only one page of English, yes. and uh, then that's all you add to the rules. So it's basically just four pages for mm -hmm. all the rules with the expansion. Absolutely, absolutely. So was it easy to learn? Uh, so there are some nuances about the game, about you know knowing about taking only you know a few things like knowing about taking only the locomotive and stuff. I'm not going to rehash that. Um, for those reasons, because there are a few rules to remember like that that you kind of remind each other. Um, we gave it a four. I think the other reason we gave it a four, truthfully though, is the, the fact that and there's not really a way to change this, but you tend to forget to score. Yeah. You put down your trains, 
and you're like, okay, I, I, I made you know a four blue train thing, and you're mm-hmm. ready to have, and you keep playing, and you're like, oh, did I score that? Do yes. you remember if I scored that? That is a great point. There's nothing reminding you to do it until right. it's the next turn, and you say, I didn't score that, and now right. I have to try and backtrack. And I think this game's a little tricky because with the terrain cards, you can't just count them all up at the end and try to correct it. You really right. got to make sure you do it as you yeah, go. Yeah, the basic ticket to ride game, if you d- forgot to score, you can always count your trains and figure out what your points were. Mm-hmm. Where this is exactly right because you don't remember if you had terrain cards or not. I mean, I guess you could remember, but it's just more of a, a difficulty. To so remember. that is a great point, and that is why we gave it a four. Yeah, so, so we give it a still four. It's not bad out of five. Yeah. I'll take it. So, Jane, how about the manufacturing of this game? A Days of Wonder does a great job. Uh, we actually have a lot of the Ticket to Ride games already in our, our game closet. Um, we, this is the first time we are playing the Africa game. The only thing we didn't care about the Africa expansion itself was the board's a little bit thin. Not a big deal, really, except that when we first laid it down, the end of the board, which is doing a little better now, but it was buckling a little bit, and it's not good to have a buckling game board, especially when you're trying to put pieces across on there, you know, because it, obviously it could, it could mess up the pieces. But not so bad, we, we dealt with that. Now I have to tell you though, and this has got nothing to do with the expansion game, the, but when you're combining the original game Ticket to Ride with the expansion, we're actually using the original Ticket to Ride um, train cards. And as you can see, they're a lot smaller than the, uh, the Africa cards. And I think, I'm pretty sure I have to double check this, but Ticket to Ride games, the newer ones, like we have the Marklin game, we have the Ticket to Ride Europe game, they actually did increase the size of these train cards. Yeah. So I really can't complain about it because it has changed and the Africa game is what we're actually reviewing. These were tricky to shuffle. But these are, yeah, these are hard to shuffle. They're so teeny. And especially if you try to pick them up, you're like, eh, nah, trying to pick them up with two fingers. And um, I just felt that the, these cards are a little too small, but I think they learned that lesson as well. But so that's why, again, we, we scored just a little bit lower. We needed a four. Still not bad. Still good. Manufacturing Still good. got a four. Um, hey, were you entertained? Did you have a good time? This game is a lot of fun. I was very entertained by this game. I can't stop hitting that button. <laughs> and I just think it's and fun. the sound effects. I have a sound effect machine now. I work in real professional. Here. That doesn't come with the game. Though. No, it does not. It should come with the game. <laughs> it should. There should as be well a little as an interpretation for the names of the city. <laughs> the, that, you know, I think that was fun too. I thought I knew uh, geography in Africa, and I was so wrong because some yeah. of these cities I have never heard of before. Which is kind of sad, but. Anyway, it's probably one of those things an eighth grader will say, of course you should know what the names of these cities are. Actually, it makes a good point, though. UGG. The younger generations who are playing this game, it's a great learning experience, too. I mean, if there are some moms and dads out there, we are not mom and dad, but um, we have a lot of friends who have kids, right. and this is actually a nice game. Any, any of the Ticket to Rides are a nice game to use for a learning challenge. Exactly. So. so I did find the game very entertaining, mm-hmm. and, I, and I like the way it plays as well. Uh, you know, there's a little bit of randomness with the cards. But you have a lot of control over the strategy of the game, Strategy's too. Strategy's good. Um, for instance, you could play to the positive and say, I'm just going to build my routes and ignore everybody else and just plow through and get it done. Mm-hmm. That's or you, you. Can, or you can say, you know, I see somebody. It looks like they're trying to connect mm-hmm. all the way to the other side. I'm going to try and block them. So, and I, I would say that's playing to the negative. You said that was... It's strategic. Uh, it's strategic. It's so, strategic. Although, I, although, if you're trying to be... Again, with two players, you know, if you're trying to build your routes and trying to block somebody at the same time, I think that's a little hard to do uh, because if you try to keep blocking somebody, you may not build your routes and at the end you lose, probably. Right, and you might use up all your train pieces, yes, too. Yes, you got to be careful of that. You don't want to trigger the end of the game if you're behind, Exactly. So you <laughs> which is very careful. easy to do. So. But it is fun. It's fun to try to figure out where they're going and, yeah. and still yet build your route and learn. And you're learning different and you're cities learning in Africa. And so for uh, entertainment value, we gave it a five. Just do... Right, yes. I, I promise I won't do that much more, but I think it's just fun to hit the button. Um, yeah, five is the best score, mm-hmm. so we were very entertained by this game for sure. Yes, so uh, how about the length of the gameplay? Length of the gameplay was perfect for us. Uh, we, we, and honestly, we're not deliberately picking these games knowing how long they take, because it, we've never played the Africa version. Who knew how long it would take? We didn't know. Because there are additional features. There are additional the features, but honestly, it took us a little less than an hour to play this game again. So that's great for us, as you all have heard a few times now on our other shows. Um, you know, we are full-time working adults, still loving our job. Still loving our job, yes. <laughs> don't fire us. Um, but at the end of the day, we, we don't have a lot of time to play. So again, an hour was perfect for us. I think this game could be a little longer depending on strategy. And if you do have your five-player or four-player, it would definitely take longer. Um, but it's perfect for us. So for timing of the game, we actually gave that also a five. Five. Definitely. So do much better than uh, some other games we played. So yeah. definitely a five and a five. More importantly, though, and this is always the biggest question for us: 
would we take this out of the closet? Would we play this again, Phil? Would we actually go, let's go play this game? I would definitely play this yeah, game again. Too. I think we would both agree on that. In fact, we, based on the other editions, we have played this game again. So. Yeah, I mean, we've played Ticket to Ride a lot, a lot of years, actually, now. Yes. Uh, but this is the first time we pulled out, or we bought the uh, expansion for the uh, Africa version. Yeah, first time for the Africa version. But yeah. the other versions we have played. Uh, and, and I could see us playing this version again, too. I like the terrain cards. I, I think that made it a lot of fun. I, I still have get, still don't have a clue how to pronounce some of the town names. So. You know why I think you like playing this game? Why? Because you won. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just be real. If I would have won. Where's my train whistle? Oh, <laughs> I get my own train whistle. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, he did win. And I have to tell you, it's so embarrassing. He got 135 points. And I got 76. So I did not do on this game as well as I could have. Although I have won before. In this, not this game. Yes, you have. Ride games. Yes. Uh, which now brings our scorecard to he has won two games. And I have won <laughs> one. I got to get my game on next Next game that we play, <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta beat you. I gotta, you gotta beat get you. your game on. Yeah, so. no doubt. So we definitely would play it again, though. We absolutely yes. agree. Um, even you know, it's funny. We, we were talking about. We actually uh, just got back from Gen Con. To mm -hmm. be fair, love Gen Con, but um, which is not in Africa. It's in Indianapolis. In Indianapolis. But but it's really nice. Is this is one of those games? If, I don't know if you guys, if anybody watching this, if you've ever been to Gen Con or Origins or any of those game type fairs or conventions. A lot of those conventions will actually have rooms where you can actually like, it's almost like a library. You can borrow a game, mm -hmm. play the game, return the game, um, and to try new games. And a lot of times we don't feel like learning a new game, so we'll pick something we know, and Ticket to Ride has been one of the ones we pick tons of times, yes. uh, at least the basic version, uh, maybe not this one right yet, but mm -hmm. yeah, that's, we just love Ticket to Ride. So there is a total score. Yes, you yes. Tell us about the now, total score? Now, total score would be 25 would be the best. 25 would be absolutely and perfect. And if you've been doing your edition as we've gone along, out of 25 points, we've given Ticket to Ride, Africa version, 23, 23, which is the highest score so far for our show yet. So Days of Wonder, good job, good job. Um, so definitely uh, better than all the ones we've, we've scored so far. So definitely. that's the good news. So let's just do a quick score on that beer. Oh, that beer. Oh. That, that beer, it just to serve. Again, for those who haven't watched before, we, we drink while we're playing the game. We try the game. And this time, uh, which is the beer? Uh, this again was brewed in Russia, Baltica, grade 9. They also have something called a grade 7, which... Uh, this we, beer was uh, extremely was tasty. Nine. I, I it, enjoyed it. It was an it. extra lager. It was mm -hmm. uh, almost clear, a little bit of murkiness to it, but it, but it, it tasted well, very good. What was the kinker? 8% uh, alcohol. So for those and of it's you... it's a full pint. Who don't drink very well like I don't. Um, if you're going to drink this while you're playing, assume two things. One, you're going to fall asleep right after the game. <laughs> or it's potentially a fall asleep during the game, which is not a good idea. Or so it drink might slowly. affect your gameplay a little bit. Yes, and drink responsibly. Make sure you're you know, not doing it at a front and driving right. home later. Right, or driving a train. Yeah. <laughs> no, I won't press no, that. No, don't do that. <laughs> Uh, but you know, it was a very good beer. Definitely, you know, a lot of times um, people will ask us to where we get these freaky beers. And when I say freaky beers, it's not Miller or it's not Coors. You know, the typical ones you see in the markets right. when you go to the grocery store. Uh, a lot of times we find our beers in um, like Binnie's Beverage Depot. If you mm -hmm. don't know what a Binnie's Beverage Depot is, look it up online. You may have it in your town. I don't know. You may not. Um, but it's a great place to try unique yeah. and different types of beer from all over the world. Right. So, well, Baltica is a big name uh, around the world, but yeah. not necessarily. But not necessarily in your it's not a grocery microbrew. store. Exactly. And this one actually said, and I have to admit you were right, we should have probably drank an African beer. We probably should have. And <laughs> there are plenty. Game. There's plenty of choices. But we didn't think about that ahead of time. No, but oh, this we'll is our, our third episode. We're still thinking about how to do these shows. <laughs> so. so, But we had a good time with that beer for sure. So this expansion yes. and the original, yes. uh, where can we get this game? Well, there's a couple of ways you can get this game. Uh, first of all, you can go to their website, daysofwonder.com, uh, and pick up a copy of this game, as well as the other Ticket to Ride versions and games. There's a ton of them. Plus, a lot of people don't know, they also have a iPad app. You can actually play Ticket to Ride on your iPad, which I also have, which I think is pretty I cool. Do too. Uh, and also, check Amazon. Amazon.com always has these you know, games out there. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing to be aware of, too, is if, if you know, when you're buying this game, this game's, there's two games to buy if you want the Africa version. You have to buy, obviously, the original one in order to play the expansion, as we mentioned earlier. Just price point-wise, the original one costs around $50, but it's really a, it's a good quality game, like we mentioned, good manufacturing, a game you'll want to play over and over, so it'll be worth you know, every penny, in my opinion. But then you also, if you want the Africa version, which you don't have to buy, but if you do buy the Africa version, it's like another $25. Bucks. So you're talking about a $75, approximately $75 investment. But I, I, I would say if you really enjoy the game, it's worth every penny. Um, in that aspect, Definitely. for sure. Definitely. 
All right. So anyway, so thank you so much for watching um, Table for Two again. Um, again, our third episode. Hopefully you're enjoying the show. We have more coming for you in the future weeks. Um, but if you uh, liked the show, we also ask, maybe beg, you to <laughs> like the show with a like. 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 Or subscribe to our Miss His Productions channel to get the updates on when the new shows are posted. Mm -hmm. uh, also check us out on tablefortwoshow.com. Yes. You can follow us on Twitter. Twitter. Or you can even tweet us on Twitter, which is at Table for Two Show. Yep. And we also have Facebook pages for both, tablefortwoshow.com, or not sorry, not, but just Table for Two Show. And of course, our production company, Miss His Productions. You can like either of those if you want as well. So we're hoping you, you'll do that. We hope we get to talk to you. Um, again, looking forward to seeing you next time. In the meantime, have a good time gaming and just had to do it again. Bye. Bye, everybody. <laughs>